All right guys, Papa Pepper back once again at the Abundant Harvest Homestead. Today I want to do just a short, simple one to help people consider a few things. We're obviously in a state of affairs globally that we may not have been in um, either with what's actually going on or the reaction to what's going on. But either way, there's 10 things I believe everyone should have already done. And I'm gonna share this because they're things that we've been working on for years now. There's a reason we left Wisconsin, moved to the middle of nowhere in the Ozarks. There's a reason we live the way we do and do the things we do. These are just some things that I'm gonna throw out there and hopefully it's some good food for thought for you guys. There's probably still time left to do a number of these. And then if we all make it through this and we continue on, you may wanna implement some of this stuff in your future. I think it's worthwhile. So number one is wild edibles. There are wild edibles growing all around us that are incredibly nutritious. They're very common. A lot of them are found all around the world, which means I could wind up in Europe or I could wind up in Asia or I could wind up in Africa. And there's a chance I'm gonna recognize some of the plants if I know them now. We have an opportunity to get exposed to that type of information. Familiarize yourself with what the plants look like, what they smell like, what they taste like, where they can be found. Get a palette for them. You know, okay, I recognize that. Know what they taste like, and then if you're ever in a situation where there's simply no food anywhere, actually there's food everywhere. So consider those things. I ran to a guy in town yesterday, and I showed him five or six things before we parted that were all edible, and one that was poisonous. I said, hey, look, all this you can eat, and he was actually checking out, nibbling on the stuff, looking at it. It could postpone your death. I can't say save your life, but it could postpone your death someday. So put that information in your head now. Number two is plant a garden. The best time to plant a garden was two months ago. And that's always the case. It's always the case where two months ago is the best time to plant it. Why? Because if you planted one two months ago, you'd be reaping a harvest now. Um, Gardening is an incredible skill because we all eat food, just like wild edibles. We all eat food, usually on a daily basis. We have to be able to provide some way. And one thing to do is gardening. It allows you to control a little bit more your food supply. You can have a healthy, trustworthy, organic, rich, lush thing. And whatever you've got available to you, whether it's a balcony in an apartment or whether it's acres and acres of land, Gardening is huge. We should have all already started gardening. Number three is water purification. I don't care if it's just having a life straw or having a Berkey filter or knowing how to, uh, you know, process wild water, you know, lakes, ponds, streams, puddles, whatever it may be, having some uh, tablets on hand to drop in the water to purify, whatever it may be, water, like food, is one of those things we need on a regular basis. So by this point, hopefully, you've come across some either products that are gonna help you with that or some information that's gonna help you with it because it's, it's necessary for life. And um, all of a sudden the water gets shut off, the pipes freeze, the sewer backs up, where are you gonna to go to get water? You're gonna to run to the local store and hope for a bottle like everybody else and then they're all gone? Water purification is huge. Number four would be processing foods. There's a lot of wild edibles that you have to go through a process with. Um, things like poke salad, you can eat. You can eat pokeweed, but unless you boil it three or four times and pour the water off, you're not gonna wanna eat it. Um, same thing with uh, like animals. Yeah, you can know that you can eat deer and turkeys and maybe you know get a shot off in a crisis situation and kill one, but if you don't know how to process an animal, if you don't know how to get the meat out, how to not contaminate it, what type of time you have to operate, um, it could just be a waste of time and effort and the life of an animal. You have to learn these things ahead of time, how to process whatever it is, whether it's meat or whether it's vegetable or fruit. Uh, I got a friend who wants to learn some of that stuff. So, you know, there's a sheep we're gonna kill at some point, he can come over. You know, we'll, we'll butcher an animal, we'll harvest it together. I've done a lot of sheep and goats, a couple of cows and deer in my time. We've helped others, we've learned from others, and then also hopefully to be teaching others got to have that information ahead of time. Um, number five would be preserving food. Yeah, you could take down a deer, but if it's just you and somebody else, what's going to happen to the rest of that meat? You know, unless you know how to cure it, how to smoke it, how to preserve it. Is there different ways you could dehydrate things or different ways you could can things, maybe without electricity, maybe with electricity. Maybe if you're planting a garden and you have an extra harvest, what do you do with that? Learning how to preserve food is also something we should have done already. Number six would be basic survival skills. That can include things like hunting or fishing. 
It can include things like learning how to find water. It can include things like wild edibles, like starting a fire, like building a shelter. Life is a survival situation anyway. You spend enough days not eating or drinking and you will die. But if crisis hits and you have some basic survival skills, maybe you can keep your family warm. Maybe you can find some food. Maybe you can catch a fish. Maybe you can, you know, do these different things. So that's another thing. And, you know, even watch some survival shows if you have to, you know, when you're hopping down, sitting on the couch watching Netflix, don't just have it be for amusement, just to not think, just to be entertained. Let it be an educational process. My wife used to let make me watch a bunch of uh, survival shows because she knew I would retain that information. And then if she was with me, she'd have that information too. Um, number seven is having extra food on hand. I'm going to do a video about one of the biggest mistakes that preppers and homesteaders make with food preservation and how they store it. That should be out soon. But having extra food on hand is something that we need to do. If you are not able to go to the store next week and therefore you're out of food, that's a bad situation to be in. There's plenty of non-perishables that we can all have. And we can have an extra supply, even if it's just in the normal course of life, picking up an extra 10, 20 bucks worth of non-perishable. Stuff you're gonna rotate through anyway eventually, but have it on hand. That it's not a crisis constantly the second you can't go through a drive through or run to the grocery store every day. Number eight would be obtaining seeds and animals, okay? Let's say all of a sudden that um, mail is a way that people are contaminating each other with viruses. Let's say they shut down the mail. You can't just hop on the internet and order something or order it out of a seed catalog and expect people to deliver seeds to your door. Let's say the store shut down. You can't just well, you know, walk in and pick up some packs of seeds. Seeds, whether it's a handful, a jar, or a giant binful, is something that you should already have on hand, just like animals. Um, have a rooster with your chickens then if crisis hits you can let that rooster breed your chickens and maybe you've got a somewhat heritage breed that at least sit on those uh, eggs and hatch them out being able to have that next generation of laying hens can be important same thing with sheep you know have have a ram with your ewes you know if it's goats have a have a buck with your does have something that you can have already if you like the animals and then let them reproduce after their own kind so it can go on for generations you can't just run out and grab a flock usually when when disaster hits. And same thing, you're not always going to be able to go out and get a handful of seeds. Well, we're going to sow some extra seeds, but we're only going to be able to do that because we have extra seeds on hand. That's something that we should have already done. Number nine is learn how not to be hand to mouth. A lot of people, the second they get paid, they have to buy food, they put it in their mouth. Kind of like I mentioned about having extra food on hand. Um, don't be hand to mouth. If every time you get paid, you spend the money and you need that next paycheck uh, bi-weekly or weekly, or it's pretty much game over for you, that's a dangerous place to be. Um, watch expenses in the normal life anyway. Don't have so much going on because if your outgo exceeds your income, then your upkeep will be your downfall. Watch the way you spend money, save, have something extra, and don't just be hand to mouth. Don't be, live paycheck to paycheck because that next paycheck may not come in some situations and there may not be a government bailout for you. So what do you do? Do you watch your family die slowly or do you plan ahead? And number 10 would be get out of debt. Getting out of debt is something that we should all do. We did it years ago and all we had to do was sell our house. Yes, it was a big drastic step and now we live in a $14,000 mobile home, okay? But there's a reason we did it. There's a reason we paid cash for our land. There's a reason we drive the vehicle we do. If you have student loans and credit card debt and car payments and a phone payment in a lot of cases and, and a mortgage payment, the second that you stop having your income, you can lose it all. The bank bought that stuff, remember? They bought it and you're making payments to them so that eventually you can get it. Yeah, they're letting you live there for now, but debt is debt bondage. It is a danger and it is a trap. I know it's common, but I'll tell you what, even if it's, oh no, if I don't go out and potentially expose myself to something, and it may not be this COVID-19 coronavirus, maybe something worse comes along later. But if you've got that weight upon your shoulders where you have to go out and earn something to pay your bills because you're in extra debt, because you're in debt, you're gonna have that pressure that's gonna jeopardize your life. And then you can go out there, pick up a virus, bring it home, and your whole family can die. You know, I'm not saying that's the case this time, but I'm saying that that pressure would be lifted 
if you followed some of these things on this list and if you did not have that pressure of, of debt on your shoulders. And one bonus one I'll add is just simply having extra stuff on hand. I don't care if it's coffee, I don't care if it's silver, I don't care if it's bullets, whatever it may be that you may be able to barter and trade with where you at least have some sort of supply of something that's useful to yourself or others. Um, that comes in handy. I've, I've traded, you know, silver for rabbits and other things before in my past, and it may come to the point where nobody wants cash or when, uh, you know, you can't sit there and pay with credit cards. What do you do in those things? Have something that you can at least barter and trade with on, on a person-to-person -person level. Now, like I said, that was my top 10, 10 of them anyway, with a bonus. There's probably stuff I missed. What did I miss that you guys think people should do ahead of time? This is just the way that we choose to live our life because we knew it wouldn't be, uh, we don't live in a static existence. Things change and things can change very rapidly. And I don't want it to be checkmate, end game, you lose, watch your family die slowly. I don't. So what did I miss? And what did I mention that you guys uh, hadn't really thought about or that you think was worthwhile mentioning? Um, we're obviously in a situation right now. We'll see what happens, but I try to plan for the worst, hope for the best, wind up somewhere in between. I just thought this would be a short, educational, hopefully good, thought-provoking video to share with some of you guys. And like I said, those are 10 things that I like to do. And I wish that everyone did because society would be reacting in a much different way right now. And um, I think that'd be better for all of us. I'll see you guys next time. Papa out.